Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to, or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. And we'll be doing things just like that. In fact, we'll be taking a vintage car ride through the French Riviera this summer. And we'll be truffle hunting in Florence in the fall, to name just a few of the experiences so that I can give you a feel for it. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Well, Kimberly, I'm moving to Europe. Murgatroyd, how the hell are you? You know, I think that's probably my favorite one that you've ever done. I don't know what they're called. Are they called euphemism? It's not really a euphemism. It's, uh, I don't know what it's called. We're going to have to find the name out. But you know what we're going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about blurring the lines, blurring the edges, becoming someone that you're really not because you feel like you have to. Let me explain. So you're basically taking our conversation in uh, last night that you coached me through and airing it to the world. Yeah, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna <laughs> let you say because I don't want to put words in your mouth because I'm gonna get it wrong. But here, look, here's the thing. It is so easy to do in this world of social media to put forth the filtered photo, the homogenized, pasteurized post because you don't want to offend the people around you. You know, I don't want to, if I say this, my mother's going to get mad. If I say that, somebody else is going to see it. You know, I may not mean it that way, but they're going to, they're going to sense it that way. Or I have a, a group of people that are attracted to my product or service, and these people may not like it, or these people may not resonate with it. And so you tend to, to blur the edges of your message, to to tamper it, to change it in such a way because you're trying to appeal to more people. And what I've learned both personally and from sitting in thousands of hours of, you know, classes from podcasts to being in masterminds, et cetera, that that is a recipe for disaster in your business and it's a recipe for disaster in your personal life. It is way better to offend, upset, or turn off and allow someone not to be resonated, 98% of the people, but to have two people, 2% of the people say, oh my God, I needed to hear this. That was exactly what I was thinking. That's my life. That's what I'm after. Because inside of each of us, there is a fingerprint, a DNA pattern that is uniquely specific to us. And if we don't get that out to the world, then we're doing this massive disservice to, I think, our creator or the reason why we're on this planet, because we're becoming someone else. 
And it's so easy to have that happen. So maybe if you're willing, you can kind of share um, how this subject came up from your perspective. Yeah. Okay. So last night, I just, you know, it's tough on social media to have a message. And my team did a call with um, Shaleen Johnson uh, Monday night. And she said, you want to be known for one thing initially and not dip into too many areas of expertise because you're confusing people. And so you want to have one focus, one brand, one thing that you're known for. And then once you're known for that, then you can, you know, octopus out into different things here and there, but you know, you really got to get that foundation. And so I started to think of what that was for me because I feel like I'm an octopus, right? So I feel like there's too many things. And I feel like... And by octopus, just to make sure I'm clear, by octopus, you mean you're morphing into into someone or something else because you feel like there's X reason in order to do that. Sort of. I've, I've, well, the octopus part is like, okay, well, we have a podcast and, we ha- and I love fitness and I love nutrition and I like being a mom and I like um, helping you know moms make m- more money. And I like you know, freedom lifestyle and I love travel. And I feel like, you know, that message, if I had to have a message, I think it's confusing. If I have all, now these are all parts of my life, but I'm trying to brand and have a business and figure out where to go from here. Right. So I need some sort of a message and, you know, in my field of network marketing. So I'm with a wellness company and network marketing and in this company, but guess what? When I started four years ago, if you talked about you know transformations and nutrition plans and things like that, there weren't wasn't a, that much competition, so people were more interested. And now it is like it's a dime a dozen, and so me and every other mom that wants to make money from home and blah 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 and that whole story, there's a gazillion of them. So I started asking myself, what sets me apart? And, you know, now on the other side of this conversation, thanks to my amazing husband and now personal coach, uh, Rob Mercatred, you know, what sets, and, you know, and I have to say too, Kathy Savage said this to me because I was going back and forth with her and she said, what sets you apart? And I was like, yes, what sets me apart? What makes me different? Why is someone going to join my team over her team or his team or, or that one or that one. And I started to really think about this and I was like, shit, I don't know. You know, I truly was just trying to figure out who I am in this world and how can I have my message? Because I know it's in there. How can I have my message get out and the right people to hear it? And so I came to Rob and I said, you know, can I hire you for some coaching services? <laughs> And I verbal vomited my whole story. And, you know, I said, I just don't know who I am. And I don't want to be lumped into every other mom that's like, you know, not that there's anything wrong. By the way, if you're listening to this and you're like, that's my message, it's not that there's anything wrong with it. But I would, I would force you to also ask yourself, what sets you apart from every other mom that's building a home-based business? Okay, so there's no, you know, no harshness around that. It's just what sets you apart. So I verbal vomited all over Rob. And, you know, this is where having a really honest and loving and kind relationship is works in our favor because, you know, he sat and he listened like a good coach should. And he said, okay, I'm going to share this honestly with you. And I don't think you're going to like it. <laughs> Great. And he said, you lost yourself. You lost yourself and the person that you were in our jet set life days, the things you're passionate about, which is location independent income, which is live travel. I mean, I am, I've been traveling the world since I was 14 years old when I left wheels up, left the US for the first time and went to Russia. I have never stopped traveling. That bug is deep inside me. I've always said I want Sophia to be a, a global citizen. I don't want her to just identify with, you know, I was raised in the South of the USA and I need her to be a global citizen and understand all cultures. This is what I'm passionate about and creating the income to allow our family to live our fucking life, 
to truly live, to not, you know, have to do this and I have to be in a subdivision. I have to have that and I have to have this. And though if those are your have tos, that's your life and you need to design that. But for me, I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses and the status quo. I'm not trying to check the checklist that every other kid I went to high school with is checking along the way. That's not, that's not me. I've never been that person. And somehow along the way, through pressure of building a team, you know, right now we have a team of um, about 8,000. And it's really hard because you hear people, the rumblings of, well, I don't really resonate with this whole location independent, you know, thing. I just want to make money and like have, take one vacation a year and, you know. And so you start hearing all these rumblings of other people's opinions and of you and of your dream. And you begin to dull your sparkle. I can actually cry just sitting here talking about it. like. Well, you, the reason why you're emotional, I would suspect, is because it it's it's resonating as being truthful for you, right? Yeah. So you know, there's a couple of things as you were sort of describing. Did this, you that bring were, tissues to this one? That no, were, this was happening. No, today. I'll get you one. Okay. Um, it's okay. I'm good. Um, hang on, let me get her a tissue. Oh my god, for gotta, real. Gotta, this is so stupid. It's a paper towel, though. Can you deal with a paper towel? I'm good. I'm gonna exfoliate as I. This is wipe good. My tears. This is good for the for the art here. This is um, we're, no, we're, but it sucks though when you have people put their opinions of the life that you want to live. I, I, if anyone knows me well, they know that I'm weird. Okay. I'm weird. I'm the weird person that birthed my baby in water. I'm the weird person that is like natural, probably to a fault. I cure everything with a T. Like I, I want to live. I should be a freaking hippie nomad. Like I lean that way, but I don't, I don't push my beliefs on anybody else. Yet I feel like all of these people like to push their insecurities on me. And by the way, I will never forget that. Do you remember where we were? Yeah, we were in uh, Capri, Italy. We were in Capri and this um, man and woman were having a fight. At the next table. How uncomfortable is it to go out to dinner and somebody's having a fight, let alone in Capri on vacation? Was it our honeymoon? I think it was our honeymoon. And you know, the man was like, don't put your insecurities on my insecurity. <laughs> like it was like this whole thing, but that's what it feels like. I feel like now in hindsight, when I can look at the last four years of my life, I realize that the backlash or the grumblings of, you know, building this this massive organization and hearing it is really, I'm hearing the insecurities of other people and maybe they don't resonate with me and that's okay too. But I'm hearing these things and it's really hard to be a leader in a big space and have, you know, that these little rumblings because it makes you rethink what message are you putting out there? And if all of these people don't resonate and they just don't get me. And but at the end of the day, I think it's just their insecurity of of where I am I've never lived a, a small life, <laughs> right? Like I'm not trying to live a small life. I don't need to be better than you. I don't need to be the best at anything. I really don't. I'm not a competitor in that sense. I need to live my life and a big life for me. And I think that makes some people feel inferior and it makes them lash out now in hindsight when I can see it all clearly. And um, now it's come full circle. Thank yeah, you I, for letting me vent, everybody. I hope you didn't shut this off by now. <laughs> no, so I mean, a lot of people are going to be re- resonating with this because a lot of people are experiencing it on their, on, I'm sure, on their own. But a couple of things came to mind when you were speaking. One of the things is I was thinking about Gary V as a good example of this. So I'm studying a little bit about wine now, and I had to go back for whatever the reason is. It was like, you know, for those of you that, know Gary V, you may or may not know that he started with a YouTube show called Wine Library. And he was super creative. His, his you know, his family is like Russian immigrants um, from Queens that moved to New Jersey. They opened a liquor store and he just got super creative and decided to go onto YouTube and start, you know, talking about wine. So here's this like, you know, Russian kid, kind of a little pudgy back then. He lost a lot of weight since then, but he's like this, you know, self, he, he, uh, he has self-assessed himself this way. It's like this pudgy kid from Russia, you know, um, that's going on YouTube and, you know, talking about wine. 
what I thought was really interesting, I was looking up something like how long to decant wine or something, and I was directed back to one of his earlier YouTube videos. And we're going back, it's got to, feels like it's got to be, you know, eight or 10 years ago. And it was like, you know, he did, I think 2000 episodes. This was like episode 10. And it was remarkable to me how much he was the same back then in terms of his delivery, his intensity, his passion, his I don't give a fuckness. And that that version of himself that he has put forth, he has put forth unapologetically. And those of there are those people including myself who at times go, it's, he's just a little much and, you know, unsubscribe to his stuff. But then other times feel like I need a shot of him and I go back to it. So wh- however you feel about him, he has remained truthful and I know what I can count on for who he is. He's not changing to wine snobs. He's not trying to sound intelligent for the higher brow people that, you know, want to learn about wine. He's remains a Russian immigrant who owned a liquor store, who's telling you that the wine tastes like cat piss, which is the one that I heard, right? He's not, he's not willing to change. That's the first thing. The second thing is I listened to a podcast yesterday with Brian Koppelman and he had Richard Thomas on the show. For those of you that are old enough to know who Richard Thomas is, he was John Boy on a TV show called The Waltons. And he um, is now, for those of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, there's a show on now called Billions. You probably know that show. And he was the one that uh, came on and he played, they were doing a, an episode, it was the last one that we watched where you know, uh, the guy, the, the lead character, Damian Lewis and his girlfriend are trying to buy this company that was kind of like Sears, right? And he was an American guy and he's getting, that's John Thomas. He was also in a TV show called The Americans um, recently. And Brian Koppelman was asking him about uh, acting. And one of the things that he said, he said, you know, I've been directing now for years. And when you give somebody a direction in how to change their acting, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, you mean like this? And they'll, you know, they'll nod or, you know, whatever. And he'll, and he'll feel like, okay, well, they got it. And then the moment that the camera comes on, their shoulders change, their tone of voice changes, and the delivery of that script is radically different than the direction that he just gave the person that he felt that they understood. And he calls it presenting. And he said, a lot of times when an actor just can't embody it in the way that they need to embody it, they go into presenting mode. And I think that that same kind of thing is true here in the world, in the world of social media. Very often when we're writing a post or we're taking a picture or we're doing a video or we're on a phone call with somebody, we present and we don't actually come from our heart in a way that is truly authentic because we're just trying, even if it's a little bit, we're just trying to make sure that we're, that we're resonating in the way that that mom or that dad or that millennial needs to hear it. Yeah, you nailed it because I, what started and also prompted this is I told you I've been shying away from my social media and doing videos and doing different things because I just haven't felt on message And I just haven't felt inspired. And I'm not someone that can just pump out content when I'm not inspired to do so. I mean, I remember back in the day, Jet Set Life, Rob wanted a blog from me every Monday morning. And I was like, if the spirit hits me, (laughs) like you'll get it. But I, you know, it's not something I could do. I just got it. That's why you can't post. Or that's why you haven't been posting as frequently because the the inspired action isn't there. Yeah, the inspired action has literally been sucked out of my body, it feels like, because I'm trying to tamper who I am and in doing so have confused myself in who I am and what I'm bringing forward into this world. And I don't just mean on social media messaging. Of course, that's one thing, but my soul and my inspiration... I've been struggling going, okay, so where am I? Because what the world thinks and what my team expects, you know, it's hard when you have, I think it's different when you're rolling solo as like a solopreneur versus when you have like this massive team of people because, you know, network marketing is all about duplication, but people see what 
I do. And this is what started it is back when we started, people would see the way that we did things and in, in the voice we used and the verbiage and the and they couldn't duplicate that. And so it became like, oh, well, they're not duplicatable. Well, they're not duplicatable. And so I began to go, okay, well, how do I become duplicatable? And I think that's fine in some areas of training uh, within our team, but it's not fine for me as a, as a human <laughs> that wants to have their soul lit on fire. And, and you really helped me with this last night because I'm not one to chase followers. I'm not one to chase, you know, to succumb to the pressures of, you know, other people and care about so much about what people think. But I also want to have the, I'm a leader in my team and I want to have the respect and the leadership I need. But to do that, I need to be me. And so I appreciate the the nudge back to center where I need to be. And what's great about it is, you know, when we created Jets at Life, some people look at it as, oh, they just like to champagne spray around the world. And we, we had all that bullshit. But if they actually read our mission statement, it was to inspire people to live outside the box that society gives. It's to inspire people to live life on their own terms. And our tagline was, excuses are over, it's time to live. And that, it, that means if you don't want to punch the clock, find a way to not punch the clock. But if you want to punch the clock, keep punching it. Like, you know, you know it's, the- it's on your own terms. And it's not my terms. It's not Rob's terms. It's your own terms. But you got to know what those terms are, really are. Not the, ter- not the terms that society said, fit into this box and we're going to like you. And if you have, you know, the, the $400,000 house in the cul-de-sac and the backyard in the this and the this and the this, then you're going to fit in our box. You're going to fit in. We're going to like you. If that's not your jam, don't fucking do it. If it is your jam, go all in on it, you know? I do. And um, I can't say it any better than you just did because you have a tremendous amount of passion now for what your message is and your ability to be able to tap into that now is different because it's an endless well. You know, if you wanted to have a conversation with somebody you know, let's say joining your network marketing team, or you wanted to refer somebody over to, you know, my mastermind or coaching, the conversation would be very simple. It wouldn't be very difficult to try and present. It would be, look, if you, if you truly want to have a vehicle that is going to allow you to do, to do the things that we want to do. We wanted Rob out of chiropractic. We needed a vehicle to do it. We did this and this is how we did it. That's super easy to share why, as opposed to trying to appease, and I'm, you know, I'm picking on housewives because there's a lot of housewives that, you know, a lot of women that are in network marketing space, as an example, you know, trying to appease that person. It's okay if you don't appease that person. Find the person that is truly interested in walking that same walk that you walked and help them. You know, now I'm doing coaching. And what's really interesting about this coaching for me is that the people who are coming to me are people that um, say, you know, hey, look, I'm in this situation now in my career and I want to get out of it. And I saw that you just got out of it. And I really need some help. Well, the reason why they reached out to me is because they saw my posts about my struggles. They saw my, I wasn't trying in any way to craft something for somebody. I was quite literally using social media at that time as a journal to share what I was going through, the struggles that I was going through. And then when people witnessed that, they resonated at a very high level, not everybody, but the ones that did were so much more louder, so much louder in terms of engagement and likes and direct messages, et cetera. And then once, once that message was deployed and I was on the other end of that message, then the messages to me were, hey, I saw what you just went through and I really can use some coaching here. So it was only because I was willing to be super honest about what I wanted, why I wanted it. And now I can share that with people on how they can get it. And you're an amazing coach because you helped your wife. (laughs) But, you know, 
And on that note, like you talked about how I can, you know, how we can talk to people. The first question I ask somebody when they reach out to me and say, hey, I think I want to, you know, learn more about your business is, okay, magic wand. What do you want in your life? That's literally the first question I ask because I truly want to know, again, I'm not telling you that you need to be a stay-at-home mom if you want a side hustle. I'm not telling you that you have to want to travel the world like a crazy person. I'm, what I am telling you is you need to figure out what you want, what you truly want, not what you know you thought you wanted, but what do you really, really, really want in your life? And then we can reverse engineer that. And when I look at us, you know, four years ago when we started this gig uh, in network marketing, I, you know, I wanted to not go back to work. I know there are a lot of moms that are like, I could not be home with my kid all day. And I respect that. I wanted to be home with my kid all day. I also wanted Rob home. And he wanted out of that career and into a passion project. And we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how we did it. Um, I wanted, we used to talk about living in Europe. I mean, I found a post from four years ago when we moved into this apartment. I reposted it the other day where I said, we're something about this is my new office, working on our vision of spending extended time in Europe and then moving to California. And that, that was crazy. And that was four years ago. Almost to the day. Almost to the day. And guess what? I have a wall with a giant sticky note about with the nine destinations we're going to visit over the next four months in Europe. And then we're going to move to California. And in 36 days, no one has a countdown clock going, we are packing all our shit in a pod and it's going to sit there until we move to California. That's how dreams are reverse engineered because we had the balls to dream. Whatever your dream is, yours doesn't have to be mine, but the vehicle can be the same if you want it to be, or you can go a different route. It's all up to you. But at the end of the day, you have to know what you want. And what I learned is you know, you you can't let that part of you go because what fueled my passion for this business in the beginning was my desire to live a life of freedom on my own terms and to travel the world as much as I wanted to show my family all of the cultures of the world because we have so much to gain from travel and experiencing things that are not our norm and getting outside our comfort zone and getting outside our little cute box that we created in our neighborhood or whatever. And there's so much to be gained out there. And that's what I wanted. And my incredible coach, RVM over here, he brought me back and brought that fire back. And it's perfect timing because we're about to launch four months in Europe And there's so much we're going to be able to do and share and value. And now I feel so much more connected to that message that I, I could cry again, but I don't want another, well, I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to, I don't want another paper towel. (laughs) I am going to leave it on that note. That was a super, um, very unplanned episode. It went exactly in the direction that it that it should have gone into. If somebody listening wants to learn more about my coaching, go to workhardplayhardcoaching.com. And I, I, as I need to pay you, I suppose. Well, I have some ideas. (laughs) Oh my God. Have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.